What's going on everybody? My name is Adam James and welcome back to my channel. Today's episode we're going to identify my top five 3D printer recommendations for 2020. We've got Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the holiday season. I don't think there's any better time to throw out some 3D printer suggestions, whether or not it be for yourself or a gift that you will be providing for somebody that's interested in 3D printing, both as a hobbyist or as an engineer using it as a tool to develop prototypes. If you haven't already, smash the like button below and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'll also leave some affiliate links below if you'd like to support the channel. Pumping out these videos takes time and effort, so if you'd like to keep the channel going, that is always appreciated. So with all that being said, let's jump right on into it. So number five, we have the Creality Ender 3. Now I picked the Creality Ender 3 specifically because of its price point at under $200. The printer comes in at $179 and during this Black Friday deal, you can actually get it for $169. So I think that's a really good deal. It's got a build area of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. Uh, it does have manual bed leveling, but it has a resolution of 0.1 millimeters. The nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters. And then the build plate is actually a removable heated build plate. So you get a heated build plate. Uh, and then it also claims that it can print ABS, which is a check mark on my list. The max nozzle temperature is 255 degrees Celsius. And then it does have a Bowden filament feeder tube it is not a direct driven extruder what that means is there isn't a direct gear driving the filament into the extruder nozzle i did want to call out maker's muse i will link a video in this description according to him you want to replace both of the couples on the bottom tube because they are absolute and utter garbage. A link to the Capricorn XS series PTFE Bowden tube that he used is down below. And then the max travel speed actually claims up to get to 180 millimeters per second. Um, I would assume that could only be utilized for XY relocation and not actually printing speed at a price point like this. There's no filament sensor, so if the filament breaks, you're not gonna be notified. This printer is $179, so no surprises there. Um, there is power off recovery though. So say if you lose power or someone unplugs the power cord accidentally, you can resume your printing process from exactly where it left off. So that's a really key feature. It has a micro SD card. So sometimes that's a little bit of a turnoff for some people. You know, th there's an immense amount of assembly, but you get what you pay for, right? At $179, the price is so good, you can only expect to have to assemble it for yourself. On to number four, we have the Monoprice MP Select Mini 3D Printer V2. Now the price point's a little more expensive at $219. Right now it's on sale for Black Friday at $199.99. It has a build area of 120 by 120 by 120 millimeters. It's got manual bed leveling. I mean, we're still at about $200 here, so that is expected. We've got a resolution of 0.1 millimeters, 0.4 millimeter nozzle diameter, a build plate that gets up to 60 degrees Celsius, so this will most certainly be exclusively for material such as PLA and then a max nozzle temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. It does have a Bowden feeder, so it doesn't have a direct driven nozzles. And we've got a max travel speed of up to 55 millimeters per second. There is no filament sensor, but it does have Wi-Fi capability, micro USB and USB connectivity. Here's what you pay for. It's a little more expensive than the Ender 3, but it comes fully assembled. It's not a kit. You don't have to do anything and it's pretty much plug and play. The only thing you're going to tamper with specifically for this 3D printer is manually leveling the bed and setting up the filament holder on the side. Check out Dave Wirth's video on starting a first print with the Monoprice printer. I think you'll find it highly valuable and I will leave it in the description. But number three on the list is the Creality CR10 V3. Now, I personally just purchased and unboxed and have been using this 3D printer the past week. I think it's excellent. I highly recommend it. The reason I bought it was because of its immense build volume. It's 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. I picked it up for $562, but uh, you can actually get it 
for 461 right now from the Creality website from their Black Friday deal. So definitely check that out down below. It does have manual bed leveling, but it's expected it's in the $500 price point category, but it does have an upgradable BL touch sensor that you can incorporate into it. So that is a plus. Resolutions from 0.1 millimeters, that's pretty good. And it comes with a nozzle diameter of 0.4 millimeters. Now the heated build plate gets up to about 100 degrees Celsius, and then the max nozzle temperature gets up to 260 degrees Celsius. The feeder, I got the V3. So what that means is that it incorporates a Titan direct drive feeder. This is great because I do intend to try using TPU and flexible like filaments. I think they're really fun and useful to use, uh, especially at a build volume like this. That's why I went for the V3. You can get the V2 for like 60 bucks less, but I highly recommend if you're gonna invest that much money in the V2 anyways, just go for the V3. They both have a silent motor, but it's worth the Titan direct drive. If you do go with the V2 though, what you can do is incorporate the BL touch sensor as well as the Titan direct drive, but that's more work, it takes up your time and you'll just have to kind of incorporate that and understand um, that you will have to do those manually. It does have a filament sensor, which is great. For this printer specifically, right, build size is the name of the game. It's a sub $500 3D printer on sale. That's, that's a really good deal. Coming in at number two is the Prusa i3 Mark III S kit. Now, this is a complete DIY kit setup. You will have to assemble this yourself. At a price point of $749, you do need to take into account whether or not this is worth the money, but it comes with active mesh bed leveling. So that is key. That's really good. It's going to save you a lot of time. Um, the build area is 250 by 210 by 210 millimeters. Uh, that is a little bit smaller than the Creality CR10 V3. It has a resolution from 0.05 millimeters, which is really nice. And then it has a typical 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And then the build plate gets up to 100 degrees C, a max nozzle temperature of 300 degrees C and has a direct driven feeder, which is awesome. The max travel speed gets up to 200 plus millimeters per second. It was hard to identify whether or not this is just retraction speed or actually printing speed. That's ridiculously fast. Most likely you won't be printing up to those speeds anyways, but that's something to keep in mind. It does come with a filament sensor, an SD card slot, and has automatic bed leveling. Again, I said that before, but at a sub $1,000 price point for bed leveling even though this is a DIY kit and helps expedite the time from sending off your g-code file and actually having the printer run your job for you there's lots of add-ons like the multi-material upgrade Prusa claims that it can print any thermoplastic material including nylon and polycarbonate coming in at number one is the Ultimaker s3 now the price point is a little bit spendy, but we've been going up since the original sub $200 3D printer price point. This printer comes in at $3,850. I use daily the Ultimaker 3 uh, 3D printer and I swear by it. I think it is an awesome 3D printer, extremely low touch and the prints come out insanely nice all the time. Now I get a lot of complaints on this channel specifically due to the time it takes, but we do have to also have to realize that it is a dual headed extruder. The extruder head is a little bit heavier as a result, so they have to uh, decrease some of the retraction rates uh, to compensate for that. But uh, the bed leveling, it comes with active bed leveling, which is great. The resolution is from 0.02 millimeters. Now there's a bunch of different nozzle diameters. It'll probably come stock with 0.4. Mine did, at least the Ultimaker 3. The S3 comes with a 0.25, a 0.4, a 0.6, and a 0.8 swappable print core. And then the heated bed gets up to about 140 degrees Celsius. The max nozzle temperature is 280 degrees Celsius. The S3 comes with a Bowden tube. Uh, the max travel speed is up to 150 millimeters per second. Keep in mind that that lower max travel speed again is due to the weight of the extruder head as dual flow filament sensors. Yes, I said dual flow because there are two extruder heads and swappable print cores for this 3D printer. There's also a camera to watch your print. So if you send this off via the cloud and say you're watching TV or something uh, outside of your 3D print area, you can go back and check to make sure your 3D print is still operating correctly and there's no issues going on. Again, it's such a reliable printer that you never have to check on it anyways. So 
and it's not really a reason to buy the printer but it's a cool add-on especially for the price point reliability is the name of the game here right you're purchasing an Ultimaker printer, you pay a high price for this printer to work. Right off the bat, Ultimaker makes really, really superior 3D printers. And for an engineering prototyping 3D printer on your desktop, it's more than capable. It has dual extrusion capability. So you can print either two different materials in the same print. Cura lets you identify which extruder to assign uh, for which components or bodies within the slicer itself so it's very very easy to generate your g-code print off either two different materials or the same material in two different colors and make awesome unique prints those are my top five 3d printer recommendations for 2020 if you guys like the video feel free to smash the like button below comment down below if you guys have any other 3d printer recommendations i should be checking out and you have to support the 3d printing community. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. I did just release some new merchandise for the Building Engineering and Design Alliance beta. Have a happy holiday season and print away. Cheers.